This is the Military Bottom Line Podcast, episode 72. There are some things that you can do to shortcut the transition and to set yourself up for success, but ultimately, the transition is not a point in time, it's a period of time. Welcome to the Military Bottom Line Podcast, where we learn from veterans and those currently serving how to make the most out of a military contract. We're here to motivate, inspire, and help you leverage your service to positively impact you professionally, personally, and financially during your military career and beyond. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. This is your host, Jason Birds. Before we jump into the episode with Brandon, I want to talk to you about uh, this week's bottom line that I'm going to take from the episode and the, the interview I just did with Brandon, which was super encouraging. And this week's bottom line is to take pictures. I've said it before. We've discussed it on podcasts before. We've discussed it online before. Uh, taking pictures while you're in the military is like super critical. I mean, I've got out after my active duty time and I was so disappointed when I look back for memories and look for specific images to, to share or to use for something uh, and how few photos I have. And so especially when talking to Brandon about his story and what he's doing now, having pictures that you can, you know, have for those memories and turn into, uh, you know, something super special is so important. So whatever it is, just make sure you're taking those pictures throughout your, your time in the military, because you're never going to get that time back. And, uh, the more pictures you have, the more opportunities to kind of bring back those memories. And so I say that as the bottom line because of Brandon, uh, Brandon Aronson, who I interviewed today, who is a Naval Academy graduate and has, after serving in the Marine Corps as an infantry officer, decided to get out, go to business school, and is now running as a co-founder Paint True. Uh, Paint True is a super cool business where they're basically enabling anybody who takes a great picture with their cell phone to turn it into a work of art masterpiece that they can hang on their wall. And so we talk about his journey into entrepreneurship, uh, a lot of the lessons that he learned during the transition and his advice for that transition. And so I don't wanna like give away too many things, but basically it was an awesome conversation for me. And I think you guys will get a lot out of it. And if you're not already taking pictures while you're in the military after this conversation, I really hope you will be. So enjoy this episode, stick around and check out Brandon's story. Good afternoon, Brandon. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me this afternoon. I know you're middle of a work day, running a, uh, a, you know, a growing business. And so I'm, I'm grateful for the time that you're uh, coming on the show and, and sharing your story. Yeah, absolutely. Always happy to do it. And I appreciate you having me on here. Yeah, thanks, man. You know, I don't, I don't want to uh, downplay, you know, your time in the military at all. Uh, but I know what you're doing now and that your time since transition has been uh, particularly exciting. You're working on some things that you're passionate about. So, you know, uh, to just kind of give the listeners an idea of like where you started and what your affiliation with the military is, uh, just kind of give us a, a background on that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, as you mentioned, my name is Brendan. I'm originally from Baltimore and I went to the Naval Academy. That was a class of uh, 2012. So I know one of your former Yes, uh, Sean was one of my classmates uh, at school. I commissioned into the Marine Corps. I uh, went through you know, all the entry level training that officers go through in Quantico. Uh, and I served as an infantry officer for six years. Uh, did deployments to Asia, to Iraq uh, as an advisor. Uh, came back home and ran advisor training branch and then transitioned out. When I transitioned out of the military in 2018, I did a short internship in finance in New York. Uh, working at Goldman Sachs, which is an investment bank. Mm -hmm. They advise companies on their financial position as well as do mergers and acquisitions advisory work. Uh, and then I matriculated at Wharton for an MBA. Uh, that took two years. I went back during the summer between my first and second year uh, to Goldman in New York. Uh, and then I declined a full-time offer with them to pursue the entrepreneurial route. Uh, so I'm really excited today to talk to you about the transition, how veterans can kind of set themselves up for success, uh, what to be thinking about uh, as they make this transition to the next phase of their career. Happy to talk about entrepreneurship. Uh, my business, Paint True, is, as you mentioned, a very young company. We're growing fast. Uh, and it brings me a ton of joy to work on it every day. So uh, I'm really excited to dive in with you. Dude, awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to hear your story and super excited to hear about Paint True because I've uh, 
since I've listened to a couple of your interviews, you know, I've gone onto the website, like beautiful website, by the way. I mean, it's like spectacular. Uh, so yeah, so I'm excited to hear, you know, if we kind of back up to the moment you knew you were not going to stay in the, in the Marine Corps, um, how did you make, like, what, what culminated to that event to say like, I'm out and I'm going to go do something else? You know, it's a really good question. And I think for a lot of service members, it's sort of a um, decision that's made over the course of a long period of time. Mm. You know, for me, I, kn- I knew why I wanted to join. Uh, I wanted to serve our country. Uh, I'm a huge patriot, obviously. I think, you know, almost all of us are. Um, I loved the idea of challenging myself and getting to lead junior Marines and to work with young people as a coach and mentor. Um, and then you know, at a certain point, um, I looked 10 years down the road from where I sat uh, as a platoon commander, and none of the jobs that um, were available to me were particularly interesting. Mm. There's this weird thing in the Marine Corps on the officer side where um, you can be selected for, you know, advanced schooling, which happened to me, and it's supposed to be a very good thing um, for your career, for progression. Um, but the options that are available to you, both in terms of what you're going to study, as well as where you're going to go and do your payback tour are not in your, your hands. And they're yeah. also not things that really appeal to me. Mm. So ironically, <laughs> uh, being selected for this, you know, well thought of or well regarded program caused me to sit there a little bit earlier than I probably would have and say, I'm not really sure that this is for me long term. And I'm not really, um, you know, I don't think I'm going to stick around to, uh, to find out. So, mm. you know, the transition, I think, is very intimidating for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, it scared the hell out of me, to be honest. Uh, you know, I would tell people, um, to take a deep breath and that it's going to work out. They're going to land on their feet. A lot of the skills that you've gained in the military are going to, uh, you know, work really well for you in the civilian world as well. Um, you just got to have trust and confidence in yourself. Um, and there are some things that you can do to shortcut the transition and to set yourself up for success. Um, but ultimately the transition is not a point in time. It's a period of time. Yeah. So yeah. I would also encourage people to think of it in that way as well. So, you know, oh, while you just mentioned, it, I don't know if you've had, if you have like a three step, you know, when you said there are things you can do to make the transition easier and set yourself up for success, you know, do you have, have you already outlined like that? that? Have you like developed what any. those steps are or just kind of in general, like depending on what you want, there are things you could do. Yeah, I think there are in general things that you can do. I don't have like a, a, here's a checklist that you could follow, unfortunately, because everybody's path is different, which is why, you know, there are things that are easy in life that are just do this, this, and this, and then, you know, you'll have a successful outcome. And then there are things that are more ambiguous. And this is one of the latter. So, um, the, in general, the most valuable piece of advice that I can give any of your listeners is, is network. And (laughs) <laughs> the military does such a bad job of teaching that <laughs> word. It sounds so dirty. Mm. It, I like almost feel filthy saying it, right? Because <laughs> military service members and veterans have this viewpoint on networking that it is transactional in nature. Mm. Meaning I am having a conversation with someone in order to get something out of it for me personally, yeah. which yeah. runs an, is anathema to everything that we've ever been taught as yeah. military service members. Yeah, it's yeah. not about me. It's about the team. It's not about you know, myself, it's about our country. It's about Mm. our mission. Right. Mm. So it just feels like it runs, um, contrary to all of our core values. Mm. And I'm here to say that that is not the case. It's not what networking is. Networking is, um, being willing to ask people for a favor of their time and attention, uh, with the understanding that you will be doing, you'll be providing that as well to other people as they transition. Mm. So, Right now, any of your listeners who are still in uniform who are thinking about getting out are looking at the civilian world and they have a very narrow scope because their careers are laid out before them in the military. You do, you know, right time. I had, this is actually true story. I had a a, a major, uh, an officer I worked for who was promoted to major. And he told me, I congratulated him on on his promotion. He said, you know, as long as you show up right time, right place, right (laughs) uniform, like 75% of the time, you too can make major, (laughs) which (laughs) I thought was really funny, but it is true. You know what you need to do to get promoted in the military. So it's a very linear path. Mm. And then you step out into the civilian world and your aperture just opens up. There are so many things that you can do to make money. So many things that you can do with your time that it's completely overwhelming to Mm. try and uh, do all of them or even think about doing all of them. So how can you, you know, possibly make a decision 
given that you don't have all the information, there's too many different options in front of you. Um, and you know, you've never done it before. You have to ask people for help. Yeah. That's what I did. Uh, I talked to as many people as were willing to have a phone call with me as possible. And I asked them, can you tell me about your transition? Mm. Can you tell me about the job that you do now? What do you like about it? What do you mm. dislike about it? And how should I think about this next phase of my life? So in doing so, uh, you'll do a few things. First, you'll gain valuable intelligence, mm. which is absolutely critical for planning that next phase of life. Second, you'll gain people who are advocates of yours, which is very helpful. Um, you know, never underestimate the value of someone uh, lending a friendly hand who is in a position to help you. Um, so that I, I think most of the other advice that I would have is around, you know, how to effectively network, um, how to do targeted networking. So if you have a specific job that you're after, you know, what you should be thinking about as you go into that. But in general, my simplest advice is reach out to those of us who are on the other side, mm. uh, ask us these questions and then have us help you figure out what is the right role for me to, yeah. to go after next and what is going to make the most sense to, to lead me to a fulfilled life. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I think that throughout the military, we're often just taught to like muscle through things. You know, like, yeah. I can get done on my own, just muscle through it. And like that's, you know, the transition is not the time to just muscle through it and do it on your own. Oh. You know, like there are <laughs> like there are thousands of us that have gotten out, you know. And, uh, mm -hmm. and have gone through these experiences. And so to, to not leverage those, you know, networks, those friendships and relationships is, uh, uh yeah, short-sighted. So yeah, very well laid out. I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, you know, through what you talked about in your transition out and another interview, I heard you talk about, uh, it sounds like you're very well in tune with like, you know, knowing yourself. And so when you were given the opportunity to, you know, in the Marine Corps, pursue higher education, pursue uh, promotions and kind of leveling up in that career, you knew like contrary to what like, that was kind of like the fast track and people had a high regard for that route, but you knew it wasn't for you. And, and similarly, in another interview, I heard you talking about how, um, you know, you were debating going back to Goldman, was it? And yep. you decided like you, you turned down like, a significant you know, well, most people in the military would be pretty excited about. Yeah. Uh, and so like, how did you develop this, you know, I guess, knowledge of self where you could, you know, internally reflect on like, what is most important to you? Uh, <laughs> it's a really hard question. It's a good <laughs> question. I'm glad you asked it. Um, I think it just takes a lot of time. Mm. You have to be very honest with yourself about what is going to make you happy. And that's a really difficult thing because mm. your whole life you've been, running at something with the next obstacle or next uh, accomplishment in mind. Yeah. You know, when I was a freshman at the Naval Academy, all I wanted was to be a sophomore. So I didn't have to take shift from everyone. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a sophomore, I just wanted to be a junior so I yeah. could leave on Friday nights, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Mm. You want to get through your entry level training. You want to get through your first deployment. So you're not a boot. Mm. You know, you want to move on to that next leadership position yeah. or to get a break and go to, you know, your non-deployable billet or whatever the case is. You always have that next step in mind. Yeah. And that doesn't leave you any time to sit and think, am I happy? Mm. Is what I'm doing making me happy? And it's a really, really, really difficult question to ask, especially because I think a lot of military service members and veterans get their fulfillment out of service. Mm. I think that's more generalizable, to be honest. There's been a lot of studies done on uh, how happy people are in their lives. And oftentimes it's very strongly correlated with service to others. Mm. And that aspect of your life is going to go away when you step out of uniform. So you need to figure out how to either replace it with something else that is incredibly meaningful, or at the very least, to structure a career in such a way that it allows you to maximize the things that do bring you happiness. Mm. So, you know, if you're the type of person that uh, enjoys your leisure time, and you just don't want to work, you know, 100 hour work weeks, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make you a lazy person. It doesn't make you a bad person. Our society has this like hustle kind of mentality where if you're not working yourself to death, then you're doing something wrong. Um, and there's some, there's something wrong with you. And that is like such an unhealthy mentality. Yeah. yeah so you need to figure out what it is that is going to make you happiest, um, how you enjoy spending your time and then try and figure out how to build a career around that. Hmm. So if the most important thing to you is helping other veterans and you know, money is not necessarily as important to you. There are 
ton of different opportunities in the nonprofit space. If you think that money is incredibly important to you, which I think is probably true for a lot of people that transition out, um, you can take a job that will that will lead to you know strong financial returns for yourself. Um, I would argue that um, that might be a little bit short sighted or naive. Mm. Um, you know, I for a really long time thought that a ton of money was going to make me really happy, and ultimately I realized that having autonomy over my time was actually the number one thing that I needed to build into my life. Mm. I love working for myself. I love working with people that I care about. Uh, on things that I think are fun and important. I lo- our product uh, at Paint True brings joy to people. I love that. You know, yeah. my previous occupation as an infantry officer wasn't exactly bringing in spreading <laughs> joy. Hearts and minds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, different kind, right? Yeah. Um, but our new, pr- our, my, my new occupation does, and I love that. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a long-winded kind of an answer, but I think it's really about trying to figure that thing out. It takes time and effort and I would also encourage people to not be afraid of um, trying a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm probably going to work for another 40 years if I'm lucky. Um, And I will probably have a number of different careers and work on all kinds of different things. I think I was lucky enough to identify early in my career that I really enjoy working on early stage companies. Mm -hmm. I think that will be something that continues for probably the duration of my career. Um, But I... Uh, I would encourage people, you know, go out and try something. If you think you might like it, you know, give it a shot. If you hate it, don't be afraid to leave and do something else Mm. and try and take note along the way of the things that you really enjoy about each job and the things that you don't enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, you know, for, for people that are transitioning, I feel like they either, I mean, you know, everybody in the military is like, Oh, let me get out and like make six figure. Everybody's like talking about the money that they're in theory going to make when they get out, which is not always how it works out, you know? Uh, and so for people just kind of like, whether they stay in the military or get out and do the same job as like a civilian contractor, just to like keep the, you know, making money, I guess. And number of them, it's self-admittedly are kind of, um, not excited about what they do, but doing it for the money. And so I think that that's like to encourage people, like you said, to try different things. And it's like that transition period is the optimal period to just like go try a job. If you don't like it after six months, a year, move on to another job. And, you know, there's that there is a short window of time where you can kind of like be semi reckless in uh, in trying this (laughs) in trying out different careers, you know. So, yeah, I I would also say there's like different ways to try out different things. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know. To be an entrepreneur, you don't necessarily need to quit your day job and then, you know, start trying to sell things to people full time. (laughs) Yeah. There's different levels of commitment, right? You can, it can be as simple as, Hey, for one hour every week, I'm going to work on this idea Mm. or I am going to, you know, even like the most basic, basic of ideas uh, is to just have these phone calls, Mm. have this phone call with someone that does what you want to do. And Um, that is a very low, uh, commitment kind of thing. There's no risk of failure, right? (laughs) Worst case scenario, they just say like, no, I don't really want to talk to you. And you reach out to someone else who does the same thing. (laughs) Um, and you know, you'll gain a bet. You'll be further along in understanding, is this something I would like to do with my time than you were before? Yeah. It doesn't have to be like, oh, you know what? I'm quitting my job right now to go work on real estate investing or whatever Mm -hmm. else, whatever other ideas that you have. There are like low impact, low commitment ways to like give these different career paths a shot. Well said. Well said. How did you find yourself in the entrepreneur space? I mean, when you went to business school and you were already at Goldman, I mean, at at that point in time, you were still thinking about like that was going to be your route, right? Was it something within business school that made you think, I think I want to do this on my own or, or how did you find yourself going that direction? Yeah, I, um, there are sort of two things, uh, I think that led me to it. Number one, I lost my father during my first year of school, Mm. um, which really helped to put things into perspective for me that, um, you know, I think for a long time I was really concerned about financial return and doing something that was going to make a lot of money. Uh, and uh, I think ultimately what I realized is that the most important thing to me is autonomy over my time and being able to allocate my time in the way that will make me happiest. Uh, one day when I was walking to school, I remember it, it was just like so clear to me that how I allocated my time was the most important thing to me. Mm. It had nothing to do with how much money I was spending and you know, I was making nothing right yeah. as a student. <laughs> yeah. um, but 
I had complete autonomy to be able to pick and choose the things that I would do with my time that made me happy. Mm. And so that has been sort of a pillar um, for me going forward and how I think about my career is whatever I end up doing, it has to be uh, structured around me being able to pick how I spend my time. Mm. Mm. The second thing I would really encourage people to read the uh, book called Reboot. It's by a man named Jerry Colonna, uh, who was a venture capitalist, which means he invested in early stage companies. He made a ton of money doing so. And you would think of him as like the pinnacle of success. I mean, he's some, he's a big shot. He's made a ton of money investing in early stage companies. He's a futurist. He's been mm. thinking about the future of how we will buy things since before, you know, you and I were born. Um, and that book is fantastic. It is like one of the best self-development books I've ever read. But a part of it that I was a takeaway for me is that life is really, um, in large part, uh, will play out, uh, in the, the role of luck timing and serendipity is like everything and you can't predict it. You can put yourself into a position to create more luck. So, you know, you reached out to me to do this podcast. If I can be helpful to you in your career, I absolutely will do so. And I, I hope that you'll do the same for me as well. And maybe there's someone listening right now who is eventually going to be an investor of mine, who is going to be, you know, a customer of mine, right? Mm -hmm. So you put yourself into these positions through having, you know, interactions with as many people as possible to be able to build some sort of your own luck. But ultimately, it really is just um, sort of out of your control. Yeah. With that being said, um, you know, your chances of having luck and serendipity, uh, you want, what you want to do is focus them in the right direction. So I know that I want to be involved in early stage companies. I know that I like uh, working with other founders. Um, and so I have put myself into a position where I am now, you know, the man in the arena, uh, as far as entrepreneurship goes, I'm learning more than I've ever learned in my entire life. Um, I'm figuring out, you know, how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time. Yep. Uh, and I'm making connections with other people in this space who, um, you know, if paint true ultimately does not work out, at least I know I'm marching in the right direction. I'm mm -hmm. making connections with people who can be helpful to me in the future, who I can be helpful to in the future. Um, and so I think, you know, if I was marching in a different direction, or if I was marching in the direction of you know, doing investment banking or, um, something like that, it, it's not necessarily, I would be building luck and serendipity, but it mm -hmm. wouldn't be in something that's going to fulfill me. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. You, you've you've mentioned a couple of times your desire for autonomy over your time, and that you know that being a big reason going to entrepreneurship. What I understand, I mean, I I don't have a startup that's you know keeping me super busy. Where's the trade off between autonomy and running a startup, which is massively time consuming? <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So having autonomy over your time doesn't mean that you don't work hard. <laughs> sure. Sure. But I mean, like the, the trade off of like, <laughs> if you worked a normal job, you would have more time, less autonomy. But sure. like, is there, a, is there a, you know, a tipping point where there's more value in having less time, but more autonomy over the time that I have? Uh, well, you know, I spend my time doing things that are interesting and fun and valuable to me. Mm. So I like working hard. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't not go into banking because, oh, it's the hours are like absolutely savage, mm. <laughs> which is true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, I, um, I like to spend my time developing new skills and, you know, it's just really interesting to me. Mm. Like, you know, in school, you'd sit there and you, you know, someone would lecture at you about some sort of topic and it's very academic and, you know, you can learn quite a bit in that way, but I always just learned more through doing. Mm. Yeah. So to me, this is like the ultimate like masters in business It's like, okay, well, like I run this startup with a couple of like amazing co-founders who are close friends of mine and together we have a handful of skills, but we need so many more skills than we actually have mm. on hand. Yeah. So you better figure it out. Uh, and, um, you know, that part has been really rewarding. So, um, you know, it is a trade off. I think ultimately, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, it sort of flips the normal career on its head. Mm. So if you go start at a company, um, say you're in like a sales position or, you know, any kind of professional services, anything, right. The beginning part of your career might actually be a little bit low stress. It's going to feel high stress because the first time you've done it. But realistically, it's like, you know, you have deliverables that are given to you by a boss. You do them. And then as you move up, you gain more and more responsibility. And you're probably responsible at some point for winning business, mm. right, for bringing revenue into the door. 
So your stress curve starts low and it increases over time. Being an entrepreneur flips that. Mm. So the beginning is incredibly stressful. Um, but over time, as the business stabilizes, hopefully, uh, you know, your stress level starts to come down. Uh, and I think that thought also is very appealing to me. Um, you know, I'm never sure. I'm not sure when I'll have more energy and enthusiasm than right now. Yeah. Uh, so to me, that was also something that I think was pretty important was like, let's get the ambiguity and the uncertainty. Let's just dive into it now. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm never going to have fewer responsibilities than I have right now. I don't have children, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a mortgage. So um, let's just do it while I'm young as opposed to waiting and then being shackled to a job because I have golden handcuffs and I've mm. built this life around a stable income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that's a that's a good image, flipping a, a traditional career on its head. So yeah, well, I never thought of that before. So that's well, well descripted. Um, I was reading an article, I think it was like two weeks ago, where it was talking about how post-World War II veterans, I think it was roughly 56% of them, I think, don't quote me on that percent of them became entrepreneurs after service and today's veterans it's like four percent wow and so for you i mean you know i think of different entrepreneurial ideas and like maybe somebody has no ideas or maybe somebody has a bunch of ideas Mm -hmm. now for you if you had like it was just paint true all along or how like how did you filter out through different ideas and say like this is the one i'm going to do and we're moving forward on this um yeah, I would say a, a few things. First of all, um, that stat doesn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. You know, despite what we think about America as this capitalist society where great ideas can come to the surface, yeah. um, there are a lot of different. Um, I think I was reading a research report that showed that we are actually like twenty something in terms of how easy it is to start a business or our entrepreneurial like spirit as a as a country. Mm-hmm. Part of that is like you, you kind of need money to start a business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There are a lot of businesses you can start that don't require any upfront investment. Like I would encourage people to look at service-based businesses where you're just selling, you know, whatever it is that you're good at as a service. Mm -hmm. Those are really capital efficient businesses to start. You don't need a ton of money to buy a warehouse, to buy machinery, to do anything. Right. Um, You know, there's other like cheap ish ways to start a business as well. Um, But um to your question um, about, you know, getting started, I think it's really, I think a lot of people think about starting a business in terms of like, well, I have to think of an idea that is going to be like absolutely massive. Like I got to think about like the biggest idea on the planet. Like I want to redo how people purchase X or Y or Z and everybody wants to be be the next Instagram or something, you know? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, They're always tech startups too, where it's like, Oh, like, I, you know, because I see these tech startups in the news all the time, like that must be the best way to make money. Mm -hmm. And there's like a ton of people who have made a ton of money on service-based businesses on like the most boring things. I knew a guy from the Naval Academy class of 1962, uh, who was a Naval officer who owned hot dog stands in the mid Atlantic. This dude was worth a ton of money, like millions of dollars. So, you know, (laughs) I, I would encourage people to dream big, have um, an idea that you think could be scalable. So if you think to yourself, I just want to make money based on, you know, my own coding and developing skills. It's like, okay, well, great. Like you're, you're going to cap out at some point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe 300, 400, $500,000 a year. Yeah. You can bring other people on to code for you. And then you can start to build like a real scalable business, right? Yeah. So have some sort of idea that does scale. Um, but um, my, I guess my biggest word of encouragement is like, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Mm. You know, we have like a saying in the Marine Corps, like a 70% solution violently executed now yeah. is better than a 100% solution executed in the future, right? Yeah. Like you're never going to have a 100% solution mm-hmm. ever. It's just never going to happen because you're never going to know enough to actually uh, be able to implement something. I don't know if it was Zuckerberg or another, um, you know, technology uh, CEO who said that like your first product should be actually like pretty embarrassing to you. Mm. And if it's not, you probably waited too long to launch it. Interesting. Getting started is the hardest part. So go out there and sell something to someone. Yeah. And in the process of doing so, you're going to learn about your customer. You're going to learn how much they're willing to pay you for. And you're going to hopefully learn what their actual problems are. Mm. So if you go out and you try and sell a hot dog to someone and they say, you know, no, thanks. No, thanks. People tell you no all day long. And finally, you sell one to someone for, you know, $3 or something like that. Well, that's a customer that needed what you were selling. Mm -hmm. They gave you, 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 you agreed on a price for it. 
right? So now you can start to think through, okay, well, what, what did it cost me to produce this? How much time and effort did it find, take to find that customer? Are there more effective ways to find that customer? And then how can I 10X that revenue? Yeah. Maybe instead of selling one hot dog to one person at a time, you go sell you know, 10 hot dogs to a business for yeah. their lunch. And now you've 10X your revenue overnight, right? Yeah. So, but it all starts with that first sale. Mm. And um, so I would encourage people to think about how can I get just one sale? It just has to be one. Yeah. And then you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Simplify it. You know, like it, it's so easy to focus on like what your end dream is totally. and, and just get lost in like, what is the first step, <laughs> you know, like, 100%. and so, yeah, that's, that's well said, uh, for you. So like, let's kind of bring it into paint true a little bit. Like one, yeah. explain like what is paint true. And then when you, when you're talking about trying to focus it down, like get that first sale is paint true now what you thought it would grow into be or like how has how have you kind of shifted uh paint true but, but first like what is paint true <laughs> cool yeah so uh paint true is a company that i founded with a, another couple of veterans it is a custom artwork business so we take your favorite photos and memories and we have them expertly hand paint, hand painted by a professional artist they make really nice gifts for special occasions whether it's a wedding or a retirement ceremony um, a housewarming present, uh, a birthday, anniversary, you name it. These are like the perfect gift for any occasion. Um, they're a really high quality and beautiful way to decorate your home or office with something that is um, beautiful, but also really personal. So you snapped a favorite uh, photo from a, a, a beautiful vacation that you took with your partner uh, of a sunset. Uh, you can send it to us and we can match it to a style of an artist that you love, whether it's an impressionist painting or otherwise. Um and then when you give that gift to your partner, you know, they're going to be over the moon because it's something beautiful and they'll interact with it every single day and it'll yeah. transport them back to the emotions that they felt in that, in that moment. So cool. That's so what cool. we do. So cool. Yeah. I, I was really interested in the business because it's one product, which is a custom painting, mm -hmm. but it's very flexible. So we sell product to people who want pet paintings, to people that want house paintings, to people that want landscapes, to they're a great way to remember uh, a lost loved one. Mm. So for us, the first, uh, you know, you asked, am I happy with where we are? I think was kind of the, the, the yeah, not, not yeah, so not much. Not are so you happy much. with where you are, but is it, is it now what you like, are you living the vision that you kind of made up for yourself when you first started or has it kind of taken its own course of things? Um, yeah, I think some things have come to fruition that I thought would, yeah. um, you know, uh, I think I was a little bit naive when we first launched, mm. um, Businesses take a long time to grow. We're fortunate in that our business is growing um, at a healthy rate. Um, but with that being said, I mean, there's always, we always want to do more. Um, you know, we're lucky in that our product, there's millions of miles of empty wall space in the United States. So <laughs> I think the, the sky's kind of the limit on how much of this we can sell. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of how we have spent our time over the last like year and a half, two years is trying to figure out what is the most efficient way that we can sell this product. Mm. Is it individual direct to consumer? So me selling you a painting on the internet, yeah. is it um, us going to a business and offering to do all of their office spaces? Mm. Um, is it, you know, uh, are, are there other avenues or sales channels that we're not really thinking about? Um, and tracking how much does it cost us to work? business on each of these different fronts? How much time and effort do we put in on each of these different fronts? Yeah. So that hopefully at the end of the day, we'll be able to sit back and say, okay, well, like, look, like, you know, for us to make a sale direct to consumer, it only costs $20, but the sale is only, you know, $300. Whereas to sell to a business, it costs $500, mm. but the sale is $500,000, yeah. right? It's like, well, that's, that's clearly like the, the, the place that you grow, right? Yeah. yeah so, absolutely. um, long winded answer as usual, but <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, I mean, I, I'm curious what I, I imagine you have, so you have painters all over the world, essentially that, that are professionals in their own artistic talent of, of whether it be portraits or landscapes. Yeah. Um, and, and so what do you find that people most often request? Is it landscapes, portraits, pets? Like, uh, it's a, it's a mix, honestly. Mix. Like, um, we, we will find that when we push something, via our Instagram, our newsletter that we end up selling that. Mm. So uh, recently we've been doing a lot of landscapes. I love a lot of landscapes. Like, you know, not everybody is going to be the type of person that was a portrait of themselves or their partner or someone or one, a family member on the wall. Yeah. But a landscape is like 
I mean, they're amazing and they come out beautifully every single time. I mean, yeah. so uh, we love painting landscapes. You know, pet paintings are really nice. They're like, you know, just fun, uh, fun way to kind of decorate your home. And you feel that emotional connection with, you know, uh, you know your furry, your, your fur baby is obviously very close to you. <laughs> Those are fun to paint. Um, we do uh, a surprising number. I think I, I never really thought that we would do a lot of memorial paintings for mm. people who have lost loved ones. Uh, it's actually been the subject of a new initiative that we've launched uh, in conjunction with a nonprofit uh, where we are trying to paint every fallen service member uh, from the last two decades of war wow. and then gift those paintings to the families uh, and to museums, post offices, high schools all around the country. The idea is that we're trying to build a sense of national unity um, yeah. and having these everyday heroes um, in front of us in a more tangible way, I think, could be pretty uh, impactful. Uh, we're fundraising for that initiative. We're starting by painting the service academy graduates, just because you know I was the, you know it's a community that I know. The nonprofit that we're working with knows the families of um, those service academy graduates, so logistically it just made a little bit more sense. Mm. But our real goal is to paint every service member, every uh, first responder who was killed in nine eleven, and then every healthcare worker who's died uh, fighting the pandemic as well. Wow. Um, that's that's our goal. It's a huge goal. I mean, yeah. that's going to cost. It's going to take millions of dollars yeah. uh, to be able to bring that initiative uh, through the finish line. It's going to take years. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, there's no point in doing this unless you're going to dream big. So absolutely, absolutely. What's the? I, I know. Forgive me. I, I've seen the name of the initiative. Um, what's where? Where can people learn more about that initiative and and maybe uh, donate if they're interested? Yeah, um, we have a GoFundMe uh, in conjunction with our partners at Steel Hearts. So um, if you go to uh, GoFundMe.com uh, and you look for Steel Hearts, uh, mm-hmm. it's S-T-E-E-L uh, space and then hearts spelled like the word heart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you look for their name, if you look for our name, Paintru, P-A-I-N-T-R-U, you'll find the, the fundraiser. I'll send you a link as well. You can you can post it on your Instagram. That uh, would be super helpful and meaningful to us. We would appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, so that's for the initial batch. And then everything that we're able to do above and beyond that fundraise, that fundraise, the goal is 150K. Okay. That'll get us through the initial 300 paintings. Mm. Everything that we can do above and beyond that will get us closer to our goal of 7,000 service members. Ideally, we'd like to have enough funds to be able to do multiple. So some for the families, mm. there's parents who are split, You know, each of the fa- households being able to have uh, that painting to remember their lost loved one. Um, as well as additional ones for those public spaces would be, I think, just um, a wonderful use of the business that we've built. So mm. Mm. Uh, we're, we're really hoping to be able to bring that one to fruition. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I know. So last night I was a wedding, at a wedding and uh, just thinking about, you know, photos from my wedding is that, you know, I feel like everybody, whether, whether you've been married or not, or go to a wedding, like there's always that one wedding photo that mm. if like turned into a painting would be like, you know, something super special. Yeah. Um, as far as the quality, like, you know, can, can a cell phone picture, if I were to take a cell phone picture at a wedding, is that adequate to turn it in? Yeah. Like, so you're not worried about resolution because of uh, painters freedom to kind of fill in the gaps a little bit, or how does that work? Yeah. I mean, we work with our customers individually. So if you okay. ever have a question about a photo, you're always welcome to come to our site. We have a little chat feature in the bottom, right? Mm. People can ask us, Hey, does this photo look good? You can just drop it right there in the chat. Cool. Um, we, um, you know, we do recommend high quality imagery is easier to work with yeah. for our artists because they know exactly what they're looking at. Um, whereas like low quality, older imagery, we can work with it. It might just be more of an artistic interpretation of mm. that photo. But yeah, I mean, your cell phone is like beyond any kind of camera technology that existed until like, you know, five or six years ago. So that's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Um, cool. All right. So, I mean, for, I know this is military centric. And so obviously lots of retirement opportunities here, uh, change of command or just like, you know, uh, I, I try to encourage people to take more pictures than yeah. they typically do. Cause you know, after my time in and uh, going through things, I'm like very disappointed at how few pictures. I took. Me and too. So, like, <laughs> you know, not only encourage people to take more pictures while they're in, but you know, take note of which ones are super special to you and, yeah. and one that you might want hanging on your wall for the rest of your life to, to remember, like, you know, turn this into a painting and it's with you and the boys and, you know, doing something, yeah. just doing something crazy. And I think there's just like, yeah, super good opportunity to, uh, you know, solidify a memory like that in, in paint form. 
That's super cool. Absolutely. That's, that's what we do is we elevate your favorite memories. Mm. You know, you have a thousand photos on your phone or thousands and thousands of photos and some of them are good enough for Instagram, I guess, but <laughs> which ones are, yeah. which ones are really good enough for the wall. Mm. Um, and you know, when you see this, a painting is just different. It hits different. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a multi-sensory experience. You can see the brush strokes that the artist used. It's th- it's a little bit three dimensional because of the thickness of the paint. And you can tell that someone poured love and decades of practice, mm. you know, in advance of ever yeah. even starting on yeah. your canvas um, into this craft. Uh, and ultimately the finished product is just this beautiful piece of art that you, you can throw on the wall and you can relive those emotions every time that you see it. So oh. it's a really special product. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, and I would encourage all of your listeners to buy as many of them as you can afford. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> absolutely. Very helpful to us. <laughs> absolutely. What's, so what's the process? So if somebody goes onto your website, paintrue.com and you know, they just basically input the image that they want and say, like, I want this and you know, whatever size 36 by 24 or something like that and yeah. and then it's just painted and, and shipped to them like how, how what's the process for somebody that's interested in doing this it's incredibly simple and straightforward okay. um do you come to paintry.com it's there's a handful of styling options you know you upload a photo if you already know what you want uh you just make those selections whether it's the size or if you know that you want watercolor and oil painting. We generally recommend oil for most work, but you know, a lot of people love the watercolor aesthetic. Okay. If you don't know, you just go to that chat widget in the bottom right hand corner and you click on it and you ask us cool. and we'll help cool. you work through everything. Is it a gift for a loved one? You know, if it's two people, uh, for, you know, engagement photos or wedding photos, 20 by 24 inch canvas is like fantastic. Mm. We can help you work through the semantics of framing it, etc. So I was going to ask a that question. Service. So is there, do you guys, when you ship it, does it come framed or do you mm-hmm. assist in the framing, you know, design mm-hmm. and, and choices? Cause I, you know, I've gotten some things framed. I'm like, I never have any clue like yeah. what, to, <laughs> what to use for a frame. And so is that something you guys assist with also? Yeah, definitely. So it's a little bit of a, it's like more complicated. You know, obviously I know more about framing than I ever thought I would, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I think making those choices can feel a little bit overwhelming, which is why we offer a white glove service. So if you have any questions about it, you just reach out to us and we'll we'll be happy to walk you through it. We do offer framing. Um, we have unbelievable frames and we have good uh, good price on our frames as well. Framing can be really expensive, mm-hmm. um, especially for canvas art, mm-hmm. uh, for like oil paintings. Yeah. So, um, you know, our, our frame pricing is better than you probably would find uh, at a mom and pop shop in your town. But if, you know, and we have a myriad of different styling choices as well. So we can help you work through that, that question of like, well, what kind of frame is going to look best on this? Mm. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, we're, we're there for you every step of the way. Cool. We really take care of all the logistics and just make it a really fun process. I think one thing that we didn't actually talk about is, um, you know, after you submit your photo, 10 to 14 days later, you get a photo of the painting while the paint is still wet. Cool. Um, and that kind of allows you to have input as if you're standing over the artist's shoulder. So you can say, you know, can you brighten the background a little bit? Or um, can you m- make the, the waves look a little bit um, like a thicker brush stroke or thicker mm. palette? Um, you know, any kind of input that you have, uh, we can help communicate that to your artist so that you don't have the awkwardness of being of telling an artist like, hey, I actually like, mm. think that this needs to be improved we just handle all that back and forth on your behalf. So awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah super fun. What, I, I'm sure there's a, a variation of the, the time of the process. I mean, what, what is a typical turnaround time? If somebody's like, Oh, I've got this wedding coming up or anniversary or whatever it might be. Is there enough time for this? What, what would somebody expect for that turnaround time? Yeah. Um, our turnaround time is measured in weeks instead of months. If you try to do this at a local art gallery, it would be months. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so we can get you that photo of the revision within about 10 to 14 days. We can actually do faster for watercolors. If you're really in a pinch mm. uh, and you've got a landscape photo, we can get it done pretty quickly. Cool. Uh, almost all of our turnaround time is you know three to four weeks. Um, and that's including framing um, from order to you know having it arrive at your doorstep. Um, we've made a bunch of operational improvements this year that has really brought that timeline down. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's a hand painted piece of art, so yeah. it's going to take a minute. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing um, is like, I would almost, I would expect months, <laughs> year, like, I mean, a, a masterpiece, like some of these, it's like, yeah, almost take as long as you want, but obviously it's, uh, it's a very on demand society that we, we want to know. Totally. <laughs> it's one of the biggest challenges with our business, to be honest, is mm-hmm. I think everybody expects everything within two or three days. And yeah. it's like, yo, this is like painted yeah. on a blank canvas. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a print. It's going to take a minute. Yeah. Right. 
Awesome. So, do you guys do, yeah. you know, if I'm just thinking of like something for myself and wine to maybe like, maybe it's not only for me, but maybe for multiple family members, do you guys do copies? Like, can I, can I get one picture painted and then just turn that one painting into like six different copies of the same thing or. Yeah, we can work with people on that. We uh, actually worked on a memorial painting for a pilot uh, who, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, was was lost. Um, mm. Where we painted a scene from his ready room uh, for nine different members of the family. Um, if you're going to order more than one, just reach out via that chat widget. Let us know. Uh, we'll either cut you a great price on hand painting all of them, or, or try and work through another way to be able to give you like a very high quality experience to be able to create multiple of them. Cool. We've thought about before, like how cool would it be if you could have like a Christmas card, like you paint your family, mm. right. For yeah. the Christmas card. And then you get the painting and then you get to send out all of the cards to family members. Cool. I think it'd be super fun and interesting. Yeah. Uh, we haven't gotten around to implementing it. Yeah. It's just like everything else. It just takes time, effort. And like, sure. there's just a limited amount of hours in the day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. How, how big is your team right now? We have five full-time employees. So awesome. myself, two co-founders, chief marketing officer. And then, um, you know, we have uh, our paint crew concierge is what we call her. Uh, she, she works with our customers and our artists directly to, um, you know, make sure that the paintings come out perfectly every time. She works on shipping and receiving. It's like a really cool. high quality experience. Cool. So someone is like very actively managing your, uh, you know, individual order um and we're all really paying attention to it so yeah, that's awesome yeah i know in uh, another interview you you said that you actually spend time on the chat widget and, oh, yeah. and answer clients directly so i mean like yeah you're, you're still like in it and and the, the the customer service at this point and and i'm sure beyond as you continue to grow uh is is impeccable so super cool it, it's still like the best way to get a hold of me like we realized <laughs> that during uh quarter four of last year me and one of my co-founders were working the chat widget and it was like Literally, people were using it as a direct line, like, hey, JD, like, want to get some drinks tonight? And he was like, dude, like, <laughs> yeah. I thought I was about to sell, like, yeah, you going to buy a painting? Like, Too that's funny. what I'm here for. Like, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I mean, you got to get your hands dirty. And then more importantly, that just comes back to that first rule of entrepreneurship that we kind of talked about, which is like, just sell something to someone. Mm. Putting that chat widget on our site allowed us to see what kinds of questions people were asking. Mm what they were thinking about having painted and what was keeping them from, from purchasing. Yeah. So that was like the most valuable thing we did in our business last year. So I definitely would encourage people to, um, to just figure out, like if you're trying to do something entrepreneurial, just like figure out how to make that first sale, try and sell it yourself and you'll understand what kinds of questions that people have. And more importantly, if they're not buying whatever it is that you're selling, ask them why and what other problems that they have that they might be willing to pay you for. Yeah. And then figure out how to solve those problems. Yeah. And you'll have a business. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. I love it. You know, I, 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 I'm a, I'm a frugal individual. So I, I imagine, yeah. you know, other people listening to this are frugal, like whether they be enlisted or officer in the, in the military, you know, they only make so much money. Totally. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm thinking like this could, this sounds like very expensive, but if some, it, like, I don't know, you know, if, if some corporal is like, Oh, let me get this for my wife or girlfriend. Uh, what's the range of, you know, affordability in, in a project like this? Yeah. Hand painted artwork is like really intimidating. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's normally priced like thousands of dollars yeah. just depending on what kind of artist that you're working with, uh, our paintings. And this is like custom for you specifically for your favorite memory. Uh, Absolutely. they start at 185 uh, and go up from there, depending on what size and complexity, if there's like additional faces in the painting, um, you know, that can take additional time for the artist. Um, so yeah. Um, we have a relatively approachable price point. Yeah. Um, Ultimately, like this is we're creating like an heirloom. Like this thing is gonna hang on your wall for Absolutely. like a decade. Absolutely. The amount of like joy it's gonna spark in you is like endless. Cause every time you come down for your cup of coffee, you're gonna remember that trip to Greece that you took that's hanging on your wall in a beautiful painting. Hundred percent. And and I mean, and that's why I ask is that like one eighty five as a baseline, it's very affordable. And mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want any, anybody listening to just assume it's not affordable and not go look at it. And so like when I was, you know, I perused through photos and stuff, especially as I've heard more of your interviews and learned more about the company. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I will place an order. Like, I promise Love you that. that I'm just start trying to find that, that photo that I know my wife and I will be excited about hanging on our, our living room wall. And so awesome. I, I just want to make sure that people don't like automatically write it off because it, you know, white glove, custom picture, p custom frame, custom, you know, artwork. Uh, it, it sounds uh, maybe unattainable for some, but you know, that's yeah. clearly not the case. So, 
you know, our goal is to make artwork accessible to everyone yeah. because it's been this like domain of very wealthy people throughout time. Mm. Um, and, you know, ultimately what that leads to is a handful of artists that can make money on their paintings. They end up very, you know, wealthy, which is great. Um, and then thousands and thousands of people that can't make money on their paintings. Mm. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. So we envision a world in which everyday people have beautiful, high quality, hand painted works of art on their walls. And on the other side, there are artists who can make a living practicing their craft. Mm. Um, that's what we're trying to bring about. So it's priced um, so that, you know, everyday people can, uh, can approach it. Um, we have financing available on our website, just like almost every other e-commerce site that you've oh. interacted with. Um, and then if you ever have questions um, about pricing, uh, about what photo to use, so if you're debating between like two or three, just like send them to us in that chat widget and we'll take a look. Cool. Um, we've been, we've done this for thousands of paintings. So like, we know, um, <laughs> you can outsource that decision to us. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, the other thing too, is like, if price is, you know, something that's, that's tough for you, if you let us know a little bit about the story and the, why you're having it painted, that's often helpful. We yeah. offer, we just do across the board on any memorial paintings for lost loved ones. We do a discount. Cool. We're running a discount right now, um, to support this, um, you know, heroes campaign. So anyone that uses the code, uh, heroes 15, uh, on checkout will automatically get 15% off 10% of the proceeds of that painting will be donated to the campaign. Yep. So, um, there, there are ways to like, yeah. you know, we want to work with you. Absolutely. Ultimately we want to bring your vision to life and put it on your wall. Yeah. So absolutely. I also saw on your website that, yeah, there's, there's military, um, military discounts available too. And so, uh, yeah, for anybody thinking about taking advantage, like don't hesitate. So absolutely awesome, man. Well, Brandon, I know you're a busy man running a, a growing company, so I appreciate your time. Um, for those interested maybe in getting a painting or learning more about you uh, before we go, where can people learn more? Um, yeah, so people should go to paintru.com, P A I N T R U.com. You can follow us on Instagram. Uh, it's at paintru and then there's an underscore. Um, you can reach out to me personally. Uh, it's just brendan.aronson at paintry.com. If you have ideas, if you have suggestions, if you just want to chat about the transition, I'm always available as a resource. I hope people will take me up on that. Um, if I can be helpful to you, I absolutely will. Quarter four is a little hectic, but I read and respond to every email. So just hit me up and we'll see if we can find a time. Um, you can hit me up on LinkedIn, like any channel. You can send a smoke signal and I'll be on the lookout for it. <laughs> <laughs> However you want to get in touch, I will do my absolute best to get back to every single person that reaches out to me. Had a lot of people help me through this transition and along the way. Mm. Um, and every time I have, I've done a, a good deed or a favor for someone, it's come back to me tenfold. So um, I'm always just, I try and be as generous in my time as possible. Um, appreciate you having me on the show as well, Jason. And obviously same goes for you. If I can be helpful in any way, please let me know. Thanks so much, Brennan. I really, yeah, really appreciate that. Really an inspiring story. And as uh, you know, I head into more entrepreneurship. I'm excited to kind of see how you guys end up and, uh, you know, watch, uh, watch your journey. I'm excited to, to watch yours and to follow this show and see its growth. Thanks it's really so much, exciting. Man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, we'll talk soon and, uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Likewise. Hey everybody. Thanks so much. I really hope you enjoyed hearing Brandon's story, hearing about his experience, his transition and his words of wisdom and words of advice for those that are transitioning out here soon or currently. And so if you guys are, you know, interested in reaching out to Brandon, hearing, you know, his advice for you, talking about the transition, talking about entrepreneurship, talking about Paint True, his information, whether it be paintrue.com or his contact information will be provided below. So make sure that you take advantage of his offer. You know, he's obviously a very bright, talented uh, individual who's eager and willing to give you, you know, any, any help you need during that transition time. And so... I, as we discussed, it's important to be networking during that transition and making sure that you are talking to those that are on the path that you want to eventually be on. And so if you have a way to shortcut the learning curve by just talking to somebody else, uh, that's worth a lot of time and, uh, and effort. And even if it's uh, going to make you uncomfortable, even more so, it's worth doing because uh, that's where the growth happens. So I would encourage you guys to reach out to Brandon. I would definitely encourage you guys to uh, also order a photo with Paint True, order a painting rather with Paint True. And I will keep you guys updated as I pick what photo my wife and I are going to get painted. <clears throat> uh, we're going through a number of them and I, you know, it's hard, it's hard to pick because it's like, like we talked about, it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a photo on your, your wall forever and it's going to turn into an artistic masterpiece. So I'm excited to get that selected and send it over to him. But 
that's all. And uh, thank you guys for coming out. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.